Hello once again and welcome to the continuation of this course. In this video, we will explore our data, then load it into Microsoft SQL database and connect using Python. I mean, a lot of questions are going through your mind now. I mean, why do I have to go through this route? Uh, why can't we just load the data as it is? I believe from my experience in this space, uh, this will help you to learn other aspects that you, are, you might not be paying attention to. Traditionally, your data is available in Excel. You know, most of the trainings and the things you've, ta you've taken, your data is available in, in Excel and all you have to do is just load the Excel file. In reality, both for analysis and machine learning, in most cases, your data is not even available in that Excel to be used. You have it in the database. So how do you connect to it? And this is why the easiest possible database now, which is the Microsoft SQL Server, is what we'll be using in this video. So I often say this to data analyst enthusiasts and data scientists that take your personal project a little step further. Don't just use the raw data the way they have. As simple as load this data to SQL database, whatsoever tool, whatsoever you know, goal and objective you have for that project, then connect to that database to carry everything out. That way it expand on your experience, it help you practice SQL, you know, which is also very good language for everyone in the data domain. Alright, so what are we going to do here? First, we will check this Excel data that we have, so that you can see we have a data in Excel, and I'm, I'm going to tell you some things about this data, how did we come up with this data. The second thing is we're going to load this data into a Microsoft SQL database, and the last one, last part is we will connect to it via in Jupyter Notebook. Remember in the last video you installed Anaconda, it came with Jupyter Notebook and uh, of course Python, I think 3.9 version. Um, so we're going to install a library that will help us to connect to the database. There are several libraries but I'm going to install PyODBC and then we create that connection and write query to read our data directly from the database. That would be awesome. So of course after we're done with that, we will then you know, check the data just briefly Let's just see the heading and see what do we have in the data. It is in subsequent videos that we do the right exploratory data analysis. All right, I believe you are set. So let us check the Excel data and see what is there. Before this, I would like to I would like you to know that I have created a folder on my desktop. Let me show you the folder. This is my desktop. I have a folder already created. This is the folder and in this folder, I only have one thing there, which is called car, car data. This is exit data. So I'm going to open it. Yeah, this is the data set. Wow. Just six or seven, I mean, nine columns. Yes, it can be that few sometimes. All right. So this is it. This is the story about this data. The data itself is about 300 rows. You know, we got it from cargo and we just have to modify and simulate more so that we have at least, now we have 100,000 records. 100,000 records. I mean, yeah, at least so that you can have that volume of data to use. Okay, so you don't expect something perfect in terms of model. Whatever model you build, we use the 300 data to generate more data, so it might not be that really perfect. I have said this earlier, it is not about having the best possible model, rather see how this kind of thing is being done end to end and you can then, you know, take the curiosity from here to apply on everything that you've either worked on in the past or you're going to work on going forward. All right. So now that we've seen this, this exe file is also available, the link to download is right there in the video description. Okay, we have this data, so I'm just going to close it. Then. Because we want to load this data into SQL uh, Server, I already have on my system, I have installed Microsoft SQL Server, which I have on my personal system. In case you are wondering how do we get this installed, I have put in the video description section two videos, two links to videos that I create on this, how to set this up. And in this video, you just see how we go through updating, uh, I mean, adding our data to the database. It's that simple, but you need to set this up so that you get acquainted to it. It's not that difficult as well. You know, just two steps, install SQL Server and install SQL Server Management Studio. Then you're able to do this. 
I have logged in right here. Then under my databases, I have two databases. I have the Adventure Works 2019, which we see how to do that in that same video. And we have the practice. It is another video that I showed how to do practice, meaning that was when I was showing how to create additional database and load all the sample data as you are collecting from cargo from different competitions just put them there so that you know you it's easier for you to connect and continue your project like that so this is the database we'll be using practice today i have just two tables there and i used to use a particular schema depending on where i get the data from these data are coming from cargo that is why i put the schema cargo this other one is also from cargo so i'm just going to right click on practice to load this data in then come to task and i'm going to go to import data right here i will be required to select my source where is the data coming from data source it's actually coming from excel and it's asking me to select the part so when i browse i'm going to my desktop ml project then click on car click on open you see automatically it has changed it to 20 2007 to 2010 leave it like this and again uh, you might have issue if you did not follow the video description because you need to update something before you can read data that are in excel recent excel version otherwise you have to revert back to 2003 um, and the highest um, row that 2003 excel has is 60 i think 65535 does and this data alone is hundred thousand so that will limit you so make sure you check that video to see how to do this then i'm just going to click on next so it's asking me you know where's the destination the destination is actually here which is sql server native client 11.0 that was what i installed um i'm, I'm okay here uh user use windows authentication yes what is database practice that's where i want it to be so click next do I want to? Yeah, I want to copy. I don't want to write query. I'm just going to copy and click next. Then I can see right there. This is the data. This is the source. Um, this is the destination. So I want to make sure my schema is important. I always want to keep my schema. Cargo dot. I just want to call this one. Um, car pricing. That's the name of the data set. So you can name it. So I have car pricing now. So this is the schema. Then I can click next. Just evaluate before. I finish so do I want to run it immediately or save as SSIS package SSIS means SQL Server Integration Service there are three of them we have the SSRS SSAS SSA SQL Server Analytical Services we have um, SSRS SQL Server Reporting Services and the SSIS the three of them are the SSDT SQL Server Data Tools so they are from the name integration for connection data pipeline um, reporting for creating report and uh, analysis for creating analytical cubes and uh, all these dimensioning so I'm um, here I'm done I can click next before I just click on finish and right here is going to initialize all the necessary steps create connection between the two sources load the data and execute all the necessary queries so that is loading very fast now you can see we're going to 100,000 wow before I'm done we're already at 100,000 so that's it so I'm going to click on close I'm going to refresh my database and if I go back to my tables now Vala I have car pricing I can right click and um, select the top 1000 you know you get you are doing yes with data scientists but yes this knowledge is helping you now to get familiar with um, SQL Server which is SQL um, more or less SQL language and you can easily you know share this as part of your learning journey this data you know do you have any experience with sql server yes i do how do you do that uh, most of the time all my projects i often get the data into sql server i installed one on my own personal system and i do get my data imported into it and i play with it before i even import to either python uh, Jupyter notebook or power bi depending on the project you're working with if you see this it means you are uh, added that as part of a learning experience and it's easier even though you might meet different type of sql in you know, different, different type of database let me put it that way or maybe some in the cloud but the language still gets you familiar it's not you, you are not it's not that totally strange okay having said that we have it here 
interest i don't want to write any language i don't want to write any sql here just to show you that now our data is in database the third step now you know we've done first step we've checked the excel second one we've loaded the excel into this database now the third is to go to python jupyter notebook and then connect to this to do this you have installed that on your system so just go press the window key and search for jupyter notebook you'll be able to see that icon here is my Jupyter Notebook. You can also search here. I'm just going to click on it. Once you click on Jupyter Notebook, it's going to run the script for you automatically. Instead of you going to Anaconda prompt, where you'd have to type Jupyter Notebook yourself. So but anytime you just click on this Jupyter Notebook, it will automatically open up and load Jupyter Notebook for you. This is taking a little longer. Okay. So it's going to load in my browser, my default browser. It's going to put up my default browser. Then go to home page. Yeah, I'm at home page. I have to navigate to where my folder is. My folder is in desktop. Remember, that's where my project folder is and ML project. All I will see here is just one single um, file, which is card data. That's the exact file. So I just have to create by coming here to new and create Python 3 notebook. The first thing I will do is just to rename it. <laughs> this is car pricing. I'm going to call my car pricing. Then I will rename and then um, you know you can do a lot with Py this might be your first time now because we haven't actually touched it so um, let me just go straight forward i don't want to be writing code or do so much let's go straight and connect before you connect remember you have to install pyodbc so if you want to run native python code within you know a command within a digital notebook you have to use um exclamation mark because i want to install PyODBC. So I'm going to type pip is a package for installing libraries in Python. pip install PyODBC. So I'm going to press shift enter to move to next line, create new line and also execute the previous one. Because I have this already installed on my system, it's going to run and tell me that maybe I've met this criteria, you know, all those things. So but let's see. You see, requirement already satisfied. So, uh, how do we comment so that we know what we are doing here? There are shortcut keys on, on the Jupyter Notebook as well. Escape A, we insert a cell above. And when I press Escape key and press A, you can see I have a cell above. And I can just make this uh, installing PyODBC library. Because I, I, I want it to be bigger, so we can use Markdown. So Markdown here, so it makes it bigger. That is too big for me. Let me just make it add another hash, you know, become more smaller. Then Shift Enter. All right. So it looks now you can see the proper heading. I can know what I'm doing at every point in time. Now that I've done this, installing PowerDBC. Because I'm done, I just have to comment it by putting hash. Comment it so that anytime I'm running my code, it's not trying to install it over and over again. So the next thing here is I want to import some libraries. Of course, let me pass my comment again and say importing libraries. What are the libraries I want to import? I might not want to make this a markdown, so there's no need for that. I want to import pandas. Panda is part of the library that comes is for data manipulation. You know, we're going to do a lot of that data frame. So I need to import pandas. And how do I do that? Import pandas as pd and moreover the power dbc that we've installed now we now need to import it so i'm going to also type import pi dbc so i have is i'm importing two libraries now which are the major one i need to connect and manipulate my data of course we'll be installing other libraries as the need arises so there's really no need to just Right, install Python, install Pandas, install NumPy, install Matplotlib. You know, if you are familiar with that, you might be smiling. You know, but let's just pick it one after the other. Assume that you have, you know, beginners knowledge. I mean, you don't don't even know anything about this. So the next step here, I'm going to run this. I create a new line too by pressing Shift key and Enter. You can use the normal run button which we see here. You can use Control Enter as well. It's just going to execute that one without generating a new line. Shift Enter. We 
execute that command and generate new line and that is where we are now i want to use markdown here because uh, i believe this is a major milestone for you so um yeah i'm gonna say creating connection to database right so i'm gonna change this to markdown then shift enter so let's see what it takes to create connection to database because we are using power dbc library there are several other libraries that you know you can use to do this connection and again because you are running on your local machine so the you are using windows authentication you can also create a database username and password i don't want to take you that route if you go if you've gone through this video and you've installed sql server and you've done uh, sql server management studio that is sufficient there's no need to be learning the nitty-gritty of a database guy for now you know don't forget the goal is still our course okay so how do we then create this connection you know you can call different variables the first thing i'm going to just create is this variable which i'm calling for myself connection you can call it any name you can call let's just call our con me that's my connection so save all this connection inside this variable and this way i'm going to use my pyodbc pyodbc dot connect so it's going to help me to establish that connection and so follow through while i explain these things one by one press r to read and then you know open an exclamation uh, open a single quote then put driver what is the driver and driver actually here is sql sql server my driver is sql server because that is what we're using then these things are standard you know keywords so it's good that you follow through i'm just try, trying to tell you uh what it means then where is the server then you have to tell us where is the server for me i have to go back so that i can show you how to locate your server i'm back here to sql server directly here you will see your server the C server here is SQL server. But if I come here and go to properties, I will see the same thing here, which I can easily copy. You know, this is it. This is my name and the server name. You know, okay. So I've copied that, then back to back to my notebook. Here, I'm going to paste it. Uh, what you can then do is remove your name and put full stop. Meaning, I mean, this server is actually located on my system. So it's not somewhere else. If it's somewhere else, you have to put that server connection, maybe either the IP or the, the DNS that is mapped to that server. Then the next is put, okay, so not there. Uh, the back here, then put, uh, don't forget to put the semicolon. Then what is the database that I'm connecting to? The database here is practice. Don't forget that's our database practice. After this, because I'm not using username, I can design uh, define my UID, user identification, where I have to state my username, my password. But because I'm not using that, I have to, you know, um, add additional line, which is more or less trusted connection. Do I want to call this a trusted connection? Um, yeah. So the response here is yes. Is it a trusted connection? Yes. Make it a trusted connection. I'm um, sorry. Yeah. And um, I have to close this quote. You know, I opened the quote initially, so it is time to close it. Right here, I am done stating my connection strings. So to demystify this or to make it simpler for us, what we are just doing here is, okay, you are connecting via Jupyter Notebook. Okay, where's my driver? What is my driver? My driver is SQL Server. My driver could be Oracle. My driver could be different, uh, um, could be another type of database, Postgre and the rest. But um, where is the server? The server is on my system, but this is the server name, SQL, uh, SQL Express. What database am I connecting to? Practice? Is it trusted connection? Yes. Then I need to add one more line, which uh, is more or less cursor. That is more like the executor. I call my con, con dot cursor. So this is listening and opening the connection window, more or less opening the connection to the database. You can close this at the end, but this now, we create that connection that we want. So I'm going to run it. 
right now is trying to uh, so fast is done connecting to that database which is on my system the next step here is i want to read my data so let us also uh, mark down this read data from the database i'm gonna make it mark down all right shift enter to do this i'm going to just define data my variable data then pd dot read underscore sql underscore query so this is from pandas pandas have that particular you know um sub function that can help you to read data directly from sql uh, database so and that's what i'm doing here read sql query so then i have to write my query you can see as i close it now okay what is your query my query to write this query you have to use this three dot three times you are quoting a string here but more or less more than a string uh, you will get to understand all these elements one by one later so let us ask my sql query so select let me just select maybe top top 10 or top 20 select top 20 everything I need all the columns from my my table is cargo dot car pricing. I think that's what we have there. Yeah. And after the three quotes, you have to put your connection that okay, select this, go and execute this query using what? Where's the connection? And that's where I have to put con. So that's the same connection that I've created here. Okay, that use this guy. Use this connection, go to that database, use those criteria, then go and execute this query for me. So I have have this uh, and I've saved the result inside data, but it's not going to have it as a data frame. So I have to convert it to data frame. Um, let me say data df meaning is a data frame. Data frame is a date uh, more or less uh, yeah, a data type in Python, even in programming generally, but let's just put it in Python. Um, data frame more or less simulate our table structure what we have in database what we have in our excel that's exactly what we need here so pd which is pandas still help me to do that it's just more or less by saying pd dot data frame then what am i converting to data frame my data because that is where the output of this whole query is being stored what i'm going to do right now is just to press shift enter so it will go there and execute it's done it's done running that this query all right, let's see what we have inside it. I'm going to say data underscore df. Fantastic. Do you see that? These are all my columns and this is the data. Indexing from zero. So this is 20. I'm selecting top 20. So if I don't want to select top 20, I'm just going to remove top 20. Select that. Select everything. Run it. Of course, if I try to run this, it's going to select everything so I can put uh, add. So when I do add, it's just going to select this. You see that now it's selecting to five, but now this is loading my entire data. I have everything here. We are not exploring this data yet, but you see, it is not really that too technical. It is good you had this as part of your knowledge rather than reading this data from Excel. I believe you are already inspired and you're ready to continue on this learning journey. We have a lot in stock for you. In the next video, I'm going to run you through the descriptive analysis of this data. We're going to explore it using a very familiar library called DataSist. Uh, all the credit goes to, you know, Rising or Degua. I'm going to hide this data in the video. Let's get to that session first. But for now, I hope this is clear. I hope you're enjoying this. Please keep practicing and don't just watch this video. Thank you and see you in the next video.